Hi everybody, I'm Pia with Stitches and Scraps and this is Lesson 6 of the Learn to Crochet series. In today's lesson, we're going to be working a single crochet border around the outside of our swatch. So far in our swatch, if you've been following along, we've done a couple rows of single crochet, a couple rows of half double, a couple rows, sorry, a couple rows of single, a couple rows of double, and a couple rows of half double. Um, and then I mentioned that if you wanted a nice squarish swatch that you should repeat those six rows again. So here are two more rows of single, two more rows of double, and two more rows of half double. So today I'm going to be working around the outside because you'll notice that the top looks nice and even, the bottom looks nice and even, but the sides are messy and knotty and wonky. And so we're going to put a nice even border so the whole piece looks finished. And we're doing that in single crochet. We're going to work back across the top first with a row of single crochet. So if you remember how to do the single crochet, we start by chaining one to get up to the height of the row. And then we'll flip our work over and insert your hook, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through. Now I'm just going to finish this row really quickly. There should be 20 stitches on this row and we are working around a square. So if it takes 20 stitches to get across the top, it's going to take us 20 stitches to get across the side as well. Um, so when I get to the side, I'm gonna work 20 stitches down the side. So I finished 20 stitches across the top, and now I wanna work 20 stitches across the side. But first I have to turn the corner. In order to turn the corner, I'm going to put just one extra corner stitch in. And I'm going to put that right where this stitch currently is. So I'm just going to do one more stitch right in that same spot. You see how that works? Um, so that's just a corner stitch, not counting it at all. Now I'm going to go down the side and do 20 stitches. So I'm going to put my first stitch right in that same spot. So that's one. So you can see I've got three stitches in the same spot and that kind of gives me a nice little rounded corner there. So that counts as my first stitch for this 20. Now spacing 20 stitches across the side of a row is a little difficult. So why don't we cut that in half? Spacing 10 stitches evenly is going to be a little bit easier. So this is about the halfway mark here. Let's see. Yeah, that's, that's about right. Right about there is about halfway across my piece. So I'm going to stick my tail or a scrap piece of yarn or a stitch marker or whatever you have handy. My tail is just the handiest thing right now. Right through that spot and tie it in place a little bit just to let me know that that spot is the midpoint and when I get to there I want to have 10 stitches. Okay? I can tie a knot I swear. There we go. So I want 10 stitches on this side and 10 stitches on this side that's a little easier to space, at least as far as I think. Um, in fact, you could divide it up again and say you want five stitches by the time you get to here. So five here and then five here. That's great too. Um, divide it up as much as you want until it becomes workable for you. So we've got one. Let's put another one here. And again, I'm just going into these, into these spaces right here underneath the stitch. So I could do one there, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm, that doesn't quite get me enough. Let's see, can I squeeze more in? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So let's try that. So one, two, okay. And then there was a space here, so three. I've got a little space here, four. Five. Let's go here, six, and here, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I try to avoid putting two stitches in exactly the same spot um, just because then it looks bunchy, but you can see this looks pretty even. We've got 10 stitches. We're up to our marker, so that's all good. I'm going to take the marker out, and then we've got to work 10 stitches across the other side. So let's see how we can space those. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's going to be tight. Let's find another one here. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, hmm, seven, eight, nine, and then we're gonna have to put the tenth right there at the end, but it should fit, so let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, that'll work. Seven, eight. Oh, there we go. I found another hole. There's one hole, eight, and then there's another nine, and then I can put this stitch right here, ten. Okay, and I'm wrapping it around the tail because I kind of want to get rid of that little bump there. So there is ten. I'll pull my tail tight to get that out of the way. Okay, now let's do one more stitch for the corner. So there's one, okay, and that is really the first stitch along the bottom because there's 20 stitches along the bottom as well. So let's put another stitch here in this very first stitch. So that's one and that'll start us along the bottom. Before we go any further, I wanna count my stitches on the side. I have one, cause one was from the corner, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and then twenty with one in the corner. So that looks pretty good and even across the top. It's okay to try it, rip it out, try it again, play with the placement, find something that looks nice and even and straight across the edge. And now we're going to work across the bottom. There's one. Now, you see these V-shapes that we left when we worked in the back bump before? Those are really easy to work into now, just like you would work into normal stitches. So we've done the first one. Here's two, okay, three, four, five, and I'm gonna keep going across the end and catch up to you at the end of the row. All right, I've done 20 stitches across the bottom now, and I've come to the last corner here, well, almost the last corner, um, the corner before the last side here. Um, so again, I'm gonna do one more stitch right in the same spot to turn the corner, and then one more stitch to start the side. So I've got three stitches in that corner spot, and that is my first stitch. I've gotta do 20 across this side now. My tail's way on the other side, so it's not quite as convenient to mark this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a stitch marker. There are lots of different kinds of stitch markers, but you wanna make sure for crochet that you have one that opens and closes. For knitting, they use ones that don't open and close. Um, for crochet, they need to open and close so you can remove them. But let's find the middle here, right about there-ish, yeah? So we're gonna stick it in here to mark our middle. And guys, I've done shawls where you've got to work 400 stitches evenly across, and I have markers every 10 stitches. It is such a big help. I don't like to go more than 10 or maybe 20 stitches without a marker telling me how to where to place my stitches. It makes it so much more even um, than trying to just eyeball it all the way yourself. But this is one, and now we got to get 10 across to here. So let's go with one here. There's two. Let's go with one here. There's three. Uh, this one I might need to do extra stitches in here. So I'm actually going to split up my stitch to keep them a little separate. I'm sticking my hook into the actual stitch. Do you see that? I'm going right under one, one uh, piece of the stitch here. So that's four. And then I'm going under this loop here and that's five. And this is the side where I have the, the chain three at the edge of my single, or edge of my double crochet. So that's why I'm basically going into one chain and then into another chain. So one, two, three, four, five, and that's about halfway across. Let's go six, seven, eight. Uh, let's do nine here. Okay, and 10 right here where my marker is. So I've got 10 up to my marker. Take, I can leave this marker in. I don't need to take it out. I can continue to work across just in case I mess it up and want to start over. So there's my marker. Um, and then I need 10 more. So let's go one, 
two. Let's go in here, three, four, I see a hole, five, about halfway across, yeah, that looks good. Um, okay, so five more, six, seven, let's go right here, eight, nine I could do nine here or I could do nine here I think I'm gonna do nine here okay and then ten notice that I'm right back where I started with my very first stitch of the round and that's exactly what you want my last stitch should be in the same space as my first stitch because remember in every corner we've done three stitches in the exact same spot so in this corner we're going to do the same we already did one of them at the beginning here's the one for this side and now we just need that one center corner stitch awesome so that is our border and you can see it's nice and even and looks much prettier now you have v shapes on all of the four sides of your piece and you can remove your little removable stitch marker now um, it just pulls right out. I promise it just pulls right out. There we go. Um, now the last thing we need to do as we finish our border is to join the end of our border to the beginning of our border. I am going to show you the first way that they teach everybody how to do this, which is not the way I do it anymore. There's a much neater, nicer way to do it. And I will show that to you tomorrow. But the the way that it's often done and when you work in rounds this is how you join your rounds and that's really why I'm showing it to you is with a slip stitch and when you're working all the way around a piece that's called working in a round so all of these were edge were, were rows okay we did uh, single crochets double crochets all sorts of different rows then we did one round of edging because we worked around it so to join a round if I was continuing to work for example to join around I would do a slip stitch and to do a slip stitch what you do is you insert your hook into the stitch drop a loop just like you would for single crochet okay but instead of yarning over again and then drawing through we're just going to take this loop we drew up and draw it right through this one as well so there is no height to this stitch or very little height to the stitch because you're not doing a second step you're just pulling up the loop and drawing it right through so really what you're doing is you're combining this stitch with this stitch by just pulling a loop through both of them okay and you can see that leaves a little bit of a bump here when you're on your very last round when you're ending your work there's a way to sew that closed rather than using the slip stitch and that's what I'm going to show you tomorrow when I show you how to fasten off your work and sew in all of your ends not tomorrow next week next time I do a video <laughs> in the next video I'm going to show you how to fasten off your your yarn and sew in your ends and at that time I'll show you how to make a nice seamless looking join here rather than using the slip stitch okay so I will see you then and thank you so much for watching.